Back here and police say they are disgusted by what they call senseless behaviour after seven gun incidents spanning right across Auckland overnight. The shootings are believed to be tit-for-tat strikes by members of the Killer Bees and Tribesmen gangs. And police believe they're linked to earlier gun violence this week. Ashley Yates has more. The evidence of a night of crime still visible as the sun rose across Auckland, with memories still fresh and raw. Uh, we were in the kitchen cooking dinner and we started, we heard these loud bangs as if someone was slamming a door. Those loud bangs, gunshots, triggering this police response to Caspar Road in Papatoitoi. Shots were fired at the house amidst children's toys. Last week they just had a big kid's birthday party as well, so it's, it is quite scary. Police believe the shootings indicate bad blood between the killer bees and tribesmen gangs. We know historically in the past where one um, feels aggrieved that we have seen an escalation in violence and that's what our investigators are working through. The first sprays of bullets happened in Otara, Papatoitoi, Flatbush and Papakura. All four shootings played out in the space of an hour from 6.40 last night. Police then responded to another shooting in Te Atatu at 9.20, followed by two more in Henderson and Mount Albert. At least two of the addresses have absolutely no links to gang activity at all, which just heightens the concern that we have about this behaviour. There's no room in our city for this sort of gangster behaviour. We fully support a strong crackdown by the police. The killer bees used to be a feeding a gang for the tribesmen, but police say there's been historic tensions between them. One symptom of that was when Killer Bees president Josh Masters was shot and left paralysed by a former friend and tribesman member Augustino Tai in 2019. A Monaco ward councillor says a deal was previously brokered between the gangs, youth workers and church ministers to curb violence. And they ended up um, sort of having a you know, it's, it's, it's a sad word, but ceasefire, you know, just, just to sort of calm everything down. This gang expert believes the gangs need to talk, but strong policing is also needed. Belanca policing their chapters to a point where it becomes so uncomfortable that they begin to police themselves. So we don't want this sort of attention. Everybody pull your heads in. That couldn't happen soon enough. It's only a matter of time before we see someone seriously injured or killed. A concern that's held not just within police, but those communities dragged into last night's attacks. OK, Ashley, what ideas have the police got to end or at least try and dampen down this gang feud? Well, Tom, police say it's extremely fortunate that no one was injured in these attacks and they're taking it very seriously. A team of investigators are currently working on the shootings and locals can expect to see an increased police presence in these neighbourhoods that have been affected. Police tonight are hoping that a truce can be brokered yet again, but says community support plays a big role in this happening. So far, no arrests have been made. Ashley Yates, thanks for the update.